Whoa. <laughs> Isn't that fun? <laughs> that is good stuff. Good stuff. Look at that fish fight. Isn't that fun? <laughs> Whoa, look at that perch. Wow, look at that perch. Isn't that a beauty? I tell you what, the story the last few years in both North and South Dakota, just the high water situation has created some incredible perch fishing opportunities. And basically you take these flooded sloughs, you know, which are now, you know, a lot of them are lakes and, you know, Devil's Lake, Bitter Lake in South Dakota, Wabe Lake, and then countless sloughs have high water. And this is, this is what these sloughs are producing right now. But high water cycle and a lot of these fish are anywhere from say three to six years old and a lot of these fisheries are set to peak either this winter or the next couple of years and so these lakes produce some incredible perch they're full of invertebrates and they grow perch just like this fast jason mitchell elite series rods brings you the daily log entry out drag. <laughs> you gotta love that. Oh there's a jumbo. There's a jumbo. Look at that fish there folks. Wow. That is a beauty there. And you know, one thing we should touch on is that with these prairie lakes that are full of invertebrates that kind of changes the game and these fish are feeding on scuds, freshwater shrimp, blood worms but it really is a bug orientated ecosystem and with that being said these fish are very bottom orientated and so something that we always stress is really learn how to read your vexilar in the sense that any flasher that you're using is better than nothing but the edge that a vexilar is going to give you is you can read that raw analog signal you can tell the attitude of the fish but also it allows you to look into the bottom and so any flasher is going to show you a line on the screen indicating the bottom indicating the lure indicating the fish but with a Vexlar, you can look into the bottom and you can tell if that fish is moving, you can tell when that fish changes body posture. And when you're fishing for fish that are right tight in the mud, that's really gonna give you a big, big edge when you're fishing this mud. love the girth on these fish. Those fish are just impressive. But let me show you what we're doing here. Basically, these fish that are eating these invertebrates, you know, these fish that are keying on these invertebrates, I think it really is crucial to match the hatch. And what I mean by that is a lot of times we're fishing a lot more subtle presentations, a lot smaller stuff. This here is a, uh, just a small size Northland buckshot rattlespoon. And I like to use the small forage minnows, the small buckshots and jig really aggressively to pull those fish in. But once you pull those fish in underneath you, less is more. And a lot of times we're just holding it still and just really small twitches to catch those fish. But if you can't get them to go on the spoons and you're pulling them in, but they won't go, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll just attach a dropper. And I'll show you what that looks like. But just a, basically a dropper line, just instead of having the treble hook here, just have line run down with a small jig. And if they won't go on that, it's time to back down even smaller stuff like the small horizontal jigs, soft plastics, things like that. But, you know, consider the bugs that these fish are eating and go really small. You know, a lot of lakes you can use big spoons, a whole minnow, and the fish are very aggressive. But on these lakes, but on these prairie lakes, where these fish are really keying on the invertebrates, less is more. And so keep that in mind when you're trying to find these fish is that, you know, use stuff that'll pull them in, but at the same time, it's gotta be small enough for them to hit it. Because these fish are used to you know, eating really small, small profile bugs and things that, you know, really can't really get away. I got another one down here right now. I'll see if I can catch them here. 
Got him. And I got him below me here pretty good here. A little guy there. Wow, <laughs> I love that. Dinner. These fish just kind of come and go. There's a nice jumble there. But you can be sitting for a while and then nothing, then all of a sudden they just show up. But I think it's really important that when you're, look at that, these are such fat fish. But when you're not marking fish, work that lure aggressively. And work that lure, bring those fish in. You know, pretend that you're calling those fish. I mean, they might be watering by five feet away, 15 feet away, but when you're not marking them, work that lure and bring them to you. Now, you might not catch fish pounding it really hard, you know, ripping it up, but you'll bring them to you, and, and getting them below you is half the battle. But the other thing is, once you get them below you, be efficient. Get back down. A lot of times you catch, with perch fishing, you might catch 90% of the fish during a 10% window. And so you're just trying to get that one flurry where those fish open up. And if you spend a lot of time out of the water, for example, those fish wander off, it, it's that much more work to try to get them back below you. And so be efficient. A lot of times what I'll do is I got two meat sticks here. I've got one ready to go here. It's baited up. So that way if I get a fish that's maybe deep hooked or if I get, uh, if I lose the bait, for example, I got another rod where I can just drop right back down because once I get them started and get those fish below me and they're feeding, I don't want to lose them by not getting my lure back down in the water. So when those fish move in, capitalize on it and be efficient. Whoa. <laughs> that is fun. Nice perch there. There. That is a beauty there. That is a beauty. Look at the girth on these fish. That is just impressive. These shallow, fertile prairie lakes. You know, they grow fish fast. An old perch on a lot of these lakes is all oh, four or five years old. But you can just tell by the girth, these fish grow fast and they reach that top end pretty quickly. You know, there's a lot of these lakes that are producing two pound fish. A pound perch is very common on a lot of this water, whether you're in that Glacial Lakes region of South Dakota or in these slough country, North Dakota around Devil's Lake. But, uh, you know, these invertebrates grow fish fast. And, it's going to be a great opportunity for the next couple of years because we've had this high water. And a lot of these fisheries, you know, when you have high water, you have good year classes of fish, you have good growth rates. And, you know, last year we were actually pretty dry. Some of this water actually dropped, but we're still feeling the effects from the high water that we've had over the last 10 years. And so we've got a lot of sloughs and a lot of situations over the next couple of years that are going to be just excellent, excellent ice fishing opportunities. So get out, enjoy this. This isn't going to last forever. These fish, a lot of these fisheries might be dried up. They might winter kill five years from now, 10 years from now. You just don't know. These, these ecosystems are very cyclic. They're either wet or they're dry. And so get out and enjoy it. It ain't going to last forever, but I guarantee you, if you make a point to fish a lot of this water here over the next couple of years, it really could be, you know, for a lot of people, some of the best ice fishing of their lives.